Hey there, welcome to Board Game Barrister, our local game shop in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It is Tuesday once again, and every Tuesday we get to play a game. Today we played Acropolis from Giga Meek and designed by Jules Massad. It is a game where we're all building our own cities in ancient Greece. We're trying to add more gardens and temples and markets than everybody else can, and you can stack your tiles on top of themselves to make hillsides and make your city all the more resplendent. We're going to talk about everything we liked about the game. I'm here with my fellow barristers, Elizabeth, Glenn, and Gordon. And before we do that, we're going to talk about how to play. Welcome to Acropolis, where we're all going to be building our own cities in ancient Greece and trying to make sure ours is the most glorious by the end of the game by choosing the right districts of markets and temples to add as we go. When the game starts, we're each going to get our own starting tile, and these are all identical to each other, as well as a couple of stone. We're also going to have our initial selection of tiles out on the table, and that's where we're going to begin adding tiles into our city. All the rest of the tiles in the game are in these stacks, which we're going to use to replenish the main central row every time it dwindles to just one tile remaining. All right, let's get building. So the first thing you need to know is that each tile in the game has three different sections. And each of those sections can be one of three different types of things you can add to your city. So let's take this tile, for example, because it has all three different types of areas on it. So the first area we're going to see is going to be districts like this housing district here. We know this is a district because it has no stars on it. This is a plaza. It does have stars on it. And lastly, we've got these blank colorless areas where you can see people removing stones from the ground. That's a quarry. At the end of the game, you're going to look at the values for your plazas and your districts in each different color and then multiply those together. So all your red plazas multiplied by the value of all your red barracks districts. As a real quick rundown of how the different districts work, the blue housing districts want to be all in one contiguous connected section. So I'll score points for the biggest area of blue housing districts I have at the end of the game, which would be these four here. And if I had another one off to the side here, the plaza doesn't actually connect these together. It's a separate entity and not a district, so this one wouldn't count as part of that biggest connected area. The barracks just want to be out on the edge of the city, so as long as at least one of their edges doesn't have something else closing it in, then they count for points at the end. The merchant districts want to be isolated from each other, so as long as your merchant district isn't touching another merchant district, that's great. So something like this would mean that both of these would score at the end. The temples want to be in touch with as many of the people of the city as they can, so your temples want to be enclosed. This one is worth points as long as it's enclosed on all sides, but if it has at least one side still exposed at the end, no points. And lastly, your gardens are just plain worth points. They always score, but there aren't very many to go around. So when the game begins, our first player is going to decide which tile they want to add to their city and do so. But there is a little bit of a catch here. Our first player can take the first tile in line for free, but after that they have to start paying stone to be able to take the tiles. One stone to take the next one in order, two stone to take the next, and so on and so forth, all the way in this case up to four stone if you really wanted this last tile in line. Once you make your selection and you pay your stone, then you can add that tile to your city anywhere you want to as long as at least one edge is connected to the rest of the city. That's not a great play in this case. I'm actually going to put this one right here. And now we've got our first temple plaza, so we want to start getting some temples. After each player makes their selection, we're going to slide down the remaining tiles, and this one just got a little bit cheaper for the next player. We're going to keep going around until there's only one tile left in the line, which actually means that the first player is going to get two tiles. And if we happen to be that first player, maybe we're happy to just have this tile with the temple on it for free. And now we're going to talk about how the quarries come into play. Anytime you're placing a tile in your city, you can choose to place that tile another tier higher than the ones underneath it. The only rule for this is that you have to place it so that it's lying across at least two other tiles underneath it. So I couldn't just stack it right on top of this last tile I'd played, for instance, but I could place it atop these quarries here, and that's the main thing quarries are here to do. Every time you place another tile such that it overlaps a quarry, you gain a stone for each quarry it was overlapping. So I just covered three quarries, that means I get three new stone, and now I'm rich. So we're going to keep going around the table, building our cities higher and greater, until we run through all the stacks of tiles on the table. And we can quickly talk about scoring. We already talked about how to make each of those different districts count for points at the end, but there's a couple extra things to know. So you're gonna go through and score each different district. Let's take a look at how my temples would score for this city. When you're scoring each different district type, you're going to multiply the number of stars in the plazas you have by the value of those districts. So let's take a look at temples. I've got one, two, three, four stars in my two plazas here, and only the temples that met their requirements are going to score. So this one on top that isn't enclosed isn't going to score me any points. These three temples are all totally enclosed, 
so they will end up scoring me points. And the one other thing to keep in mind is that you get extra points for districts that have been built on higher levels of your city. So I've got a temple worth a value of one, one temple worth a value of one, two, and this high up one is worth one, two, three, because it's on the third level of my city. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six value in temples times my four stars means I get 24 points for my temples in this city. We got a handy little score pad and everybody's gonna score up for all five different districts, multiplying their plaza stars times their district values to see who won it in the end. All right, so we just finished our first game with four players, took about 35 minutes, felt great. Uh, you have an appropriate amount of time for each of your turns. Sometimes you're doing a little more thinking, sometimes it's a little more straightforward. Um, I have played this a couple of other times. I've also played it with two players and it's a fantastic two player game. Uh, in the four player game, you are getting, you're watching as those tiles come back around to you. In the two player game, you have more control over which tiles you're getting and it makes more sense to pay attention to the other person's board. But it's just as engaging because all tiles are not created equal in any given game. There can be a tile that I can see is gonna be great for my opponent, so I wanna take it, but it's terrible for me, so I don't wanna take it. And in the four player game, just being able to say, oh, is that gonna come back to me, is that gonna come back to me? Sometimes it does and it's great, and sometimes it doesn't, and you gotta fall back to plan B. I really love the games where you get to draft from a limited pool of randomly selected resources. I think that it gives you just enough feeling of luck, but just enough feeling of like control and decision making that I'll never be wondering, oh, I, I missed the perfect play because you're never quite sure how the math is gonna end up falling out by the end of the game. And that ability to have some control while the values vary. Like there was a time in this game where there was a tile that I really wanted, but it was really expensive. And I didn't take it, and I, so I took what was a less good tile, but cost me less, and, you know, it didn't work out so well for me in this game. Really? I did not think you would take that one. Hmm. It's a nice tile. I wanted that so tile. Much stuff well, on it's that got tile. no yellow going on. I, that was, that's the tile I, I very much wanted that tile. Such a flat seat um, you have. But I'm accepting of this one. <sighs> um, yeah. I'm accepting of this one. I really, I really like the stone economy in this. Mm -hmm. I, I like the fact that yes, you have those tiles randomly drawn, and man, that tile there is really good. Oh, I spent stones last turn. I can't afford to get it now. Or I have exactly. That's the great thing. It's like I can, I can get that one all the way on the end because I saved up my stones mm -hmm. to get it. And this just this adds that extra element. Is the fact that you've got this thing, this economy that you have to you have to worry about too. Because if you have none, then you know that. That's the tile I'm getting. I have no other choice. I have to take the free one. But if I have a bunch of these sitting in front of me, I know that no matter what comes around, I can have my pick of the litter. So the thing I interacted with most in this game, which I found <laughs> so fun, was the stacking. Like, I think our second highest stack here is gonna be like Glenn's Little Hill. This is probably an appropriate amount of stacking. You went three levels high. I was having a blast trying to find how to do the puzzles to get it to stack higher. Admittedly, my city was the worst of them in the actual, you know, cold score, but I think it looks really nice. <laughs> I like how, they, how they've designed the stacking, so you have to put each tile on at least two others, which gives it that tiered climbing feel. You can't just keep stacking the same tile on top of itself and have this, you know, literal mesa in the center of your city. Mine had to. In order to pull off that stack, it gives it this really nice feel of having walls that look out over parts of the city and other parts that you're actually walking up to get up higher. And it's clear that went a ton into the actual design elements of the game. Uh, and I thought it was a delight. There's a lot of extra thinking and like sometimes you have to cover up stuff that's of value to you. And I, that's kind of like my dream for this game now is to pull off the perfect really high hill where I've made just the right calls and found just the right tiles. So I think that is an element where unlike a lot of other choose these tiles to add to your, your lineup that we've seen come in other games, this, this set it apart for me in a great way. Should I put this up here? Yes. <laughs> you, there well, is a... Oh, that's not where I would, okay. If you don't see it, then I'm not telling you. Paying two stone to get that Oh, 100%, dog. yeah. yeah. <laughs> not only do I get two, but I get to do what Andy failed to do. <laughs> and that's connect What's that? your blue to blue. <laughs> What's that? Oh. You had and blue over there. You we were blue. working on the following play, all right? It's right here. It's connected. Oh, my Acropolis. <laughs> There's a really interesting like 3D chess aspect of thinking, oh, you know, I have these things arranged here, 
but I have to remember that's not the end-all be-all. I can imagine the next level, the second level, and I can imagine how that could come together later in the game instead of just saying, all right, second layer's done, that's done. No more touching. You know, there is mm -hmm. a really mind-bending aspect that's very, very interesting and engaging. It always keeps me guessing. I had the privilege of being able to play this at the Mensa Mind Games convention, and it did win uh, the Mensa Select Award. When I pulled this out of the box, I was just blown away by the components. Like, this is beautiful. And when I was done playing it for the first time, I said, this is probably an SDJ nominee. Now, that, that's the Spiel des Jahres. That's the German Game of the Year, the most prestigious award in board gaming. And it, to me, felt a lot like Cascadia. It feels like King Domino, both of which won the Spiel des Jahres. Um, and I think that you should look for big things from this game. It's already been winning some awards. It's super fantastic, and I was just blown away by it. All right, needless to say, after 10 minutes of gushing, we really liked this one. It's a really fun little stacking game, plays quick enough, has a lot of good thought to it. We had a great time with it. Thank you for watching this week. Hope you had a fun time watching. As always, leave a comment if you got a comment. Hit that like button. And if you want to see all of our videos when we post them every week, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next week.